In this video, we show how to create, execute, and supervise a job. We execute it twice. The first time, the job will succeed. In the second instance, we introduce a syntax error to bend the job deliberately, and we monitor the failure. The job's object is the basic building block of automation. It defines the what, where, and who. What will execute, where, and under whose credentials. It is a unit of work that sometimes executes alone, but more generally as part of a business process, which we model using the workflow object. The workflow object is therefore a series of jobs executing in sequence. An example might be the updating of an application, which requires shutting down, backing up, downloading a file, appending that file, generating reports, and restarting the application. Each of those individual steps are jobs. The job contains the required attributes to trigger a process on an operating system or application. It might be a command, shell or Perl scripts, a native atomic script, or a SQL statement. We focus on two pages in the jobs definition. The first is the process page, which identifies what is to be executed. The second is the attributes page, in which we indicate the agents where the job is to execute and the login object, which identifies the user credentials under which the job runs. It also has optional properties like a queue, variables, pre and post processing, and other aspects that we do not cover. The attributes page contains two important fields. The jobs object is designed in the automation engine system. At execution, it is submitted to its target agents. That information is defined there. The other important field is the login object, which makes it possible for the job to execute with the appropriate privileges. The login object is mapped to a system user. We start in the home perspective. In order to design our first job, we need to access a product interface dedicated to design activities, which is the process assembly perspective. We always recommend creating dedicated folders to keep objects organized and to maintain an orderly working environment. Out of the box, the automation engine has many predefined types for various operating systems and functional environments, like Oracle and web services. Each of these provide a custom template to input the required information unique to each environment. For example, a REST job will contain the required input fields for request parameters, query parameters, method, and so forth. We select Unix for the Unix job. The title field allows us to enter a description, which makes it easier to search through our jobs. We recommend using it. We start in the Unix page. This page contains a number of useful functions like job type and shell to use, report storage location, and more. You can take all the default settings for our sample job. You can refer to the documentation for information on each of these fields. Let's head to the general page and briefly show the information it contains. In the general page, we find the name and title of the job, as well as the history. Note the active checkbox, which makes it possible to disable the job and prevents any possible execution. Here, we specify the agents. This configuration currently has two agents, one Windows and one Linux. Since this is to be a Unix job, only a Unix agent can be selected. We select the login object, which is a submission account mapped to a system user. We will come back to the login object.
Note the automatic deactivation feature and its options. Deactivating a job execution means removing it from real-time supervision tools and capabilities, like Restart. We deactivate executions when they no longer need to be on our radar. It guarantees the automated purging of old executions and helps us maintain a clean and tidy environment. By default, all executions are deactivated automatically, but you have other options. For example, deactivate if the job completes successfully, or after a certain period of time, or never. In the case of never, all executions remain in the monitoring perspective, but you can deactivate them manually. We don't want to spend excessive time on login objects since it's an administrator function. However, they are worth a quick explanation. Login objects are specific to agents since they allow us to authenticate on the host of that agent. The login object contains two fields, username and passwords. In the username ID field, we store the Unix account that has been enabled for batch submissions. The password field stores the encrypted Unix passwords. Let's consider the process page. Here we add a simple sleep 60 and exit 0. Before we execute our job, let's open the process monitoring perspective. We've selected the jobs objects we can now execute. The job executes and sleeps for 60 seconds. Notice several things. The job has a run ID, an active green status, as well as a start time and a few other properties. The job ends and takes the gray ended OK status. Because we set deactivation to never, the execution stays in the perspective. We can deactivate it manually. The executions display will show a record of all previous runs of an object, whether the object still exists in the real-time monitoring perspective or not. Executions are available in both perspectives. We're going to execute the job again, but this time we have introduced an obvious syntax error in the script. The default refresh interval is set at 90 seconds. You can manually refresh this and alternatively modify the default refresh time. You can read more about it in the documentation. This time the job aborted with a red, abended, not OK status. To investigate, you can first display the jobs report, which contains the standard output and error. You can either select the More pull-down or simply right-click the highlighted job to access the reports. The report shows the error. Notice the red alert at the top of the screen. This is a convenience offered by the automation engine. Rather than constantly supervising for malfunctions, the engine will notify you via this general messages interface.